Hello and welcome to the France 24 interview. I'm François Picard. Our guest, Cathy Martin, she's a former journalist for ABC News in America and National Public Radio, and the best-selling author of several books, her latest book, a bestseller, it's called Paris, A Love Story, and uh, it's born from the grief after the death of uh, Richard Holbrook, your uh, late husband. He was the mediator for the uh, peace deal in Bosnia, as well as uh, the uh, brokering uh, the, uh, the peace in Afghanistan and Pakistan. He suffered a heart attack in late 2010. Um, and it is, by many respects, the story that many people have felt is a universal story. But not everybody gets a phone call from the Afghan president, sits mm -hmm. next to uh, the Pakistani president at the memorial service, or consoles themselves in the arms of Hillary Clinton. It's true. It's true. My my uh, my grief, which was powerful because Richard's death was entirely unexpected and and sudden, um, could not stay private because he was a public man. And uh, and the the memorials uh, after his death were became enormous events uh, at which both President Obama and President Clinton and Secretary General Kofi Annan and Hillary Clinton all spoke. And I spoke as well, because uh, it's not customary for a widow to speak at her husband's uh, funeral. But I decided that um, death leaves you so helpless that this was something that I could do. And also something more important than that, I wanted to give a different portrait of Richard than the one that the world knew of this, of this um, uh, bulldozer diplomat who was, who was able to bring the warlords of the Balkans to heal and to get them to sign agreements. I was going to say, on our, on our debate program, uh, we've had um, former ministers who were at those Dayton Accord mm. uh, negotiations. Yes. Uh, the words that came up more were things like bully, yeah, belligerent, course, liar. But, yeah, if they, if they, if these warlords would have liked Richard, uh, then Richard would not have been doing his job. Uh, but you know, he he didn't only bring peace to Bosnia. He also shook up the United Nations when he was ambassador there. He got the uh, U.S. to pay its way long overdue dues, and mo more importantly. He got the UN to deal with a health issue for the first time at the Security Council level, namely AIDS, which was a direct result of a trip that Richard and I took in, uh, in 2000, where we went to 11 African countries and we came face to face with the terrible, catastrophic ravages of AIDS in Africa as it was beginning to pull itself out of its, uh, out of its um, uh, past and and he forced in typical Holbrookian fashion he forced the Security Council against the wishes even of our dear friend Kofi Annan to deal with AIDS as an international security issue which which has made a tremendous difference in in the course of that terrible disease so that was the Richard that the world knew the statesman diplomat but I always thought that the best of Richard was the human being and and so I spoke about that in at, at, at there were three memorials one at the United Nations one at the Kennedy Center in Washington and one in Berlin because he had been ambassador to Germany and it, and and that that human being is at the heart of Paris a love story too which is the story of 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 our love affair and but with Paris as the backdrop because every good thing in my life seems to for whatever reason have happened in Paris and that's why I'm here now it's not a book about grief it's a book about how grief loss sooner or later finds all of us that's part of the human condition and how do you get past that shock that grief to another place and and I'm finding an Paris, a good place for that because Paris, a, pa a place of such beauty and with, with so many joyful memories for me. And, and there's a bit of destiny as well mixed in. Uh, you come to the, the, the typical story, the American doing their year abroad, you yes. come to France, um, you're in the heart of the Latin Quarter, only it's not just any year, it's the year there were major student riots in France. Yes, and 1968. You have front row seats to May 68 yes. in France, and unbeknownst to you, Richard Holbrook is in the other side of town, the other side of the Seine River, <laughs> yes. uh, negotiating the end to the Vietnam War. Yes, we did not meet. I was then an adolescent. 
in a, in a mini jupe, um, linking arms with the student revolutionaries. Uh, while while Richard was sitting with uh, with with the uh, Vietnamese, the uh, North you're, you're Vietnamese, you're a bit ambiguous in your book about the uh -huh. revolutionaries. On the one hand, yes. uh, you express your distaste for the French riot police, which still lingers. Scary they were, yeah. And on the other hand, you're like, are these students going to keep me from passing my exams? And something else, Francois. <laughs> yes, I was a very determined little girl, but I also had memories of another very bloody revolution when I was a little kid growing up in Budapest, when uh, we had an equally uh, hopeful at the beginning revolution, which ended in violence and blood, and it, and it resulted in, in my family having to flee Budapest, and, and that's when we began our long journey to the United States. So I did not share my fellow students' excitement in singing the Internationale, and, and the thing that shocked me most was when I saw a poster of Stalin in the Latin Quarter. And Stalin had jailed my parents. And I thought, do they even know the cruelty of this man? I can't, I can't support a revolution that, that hails Stalin as, as an iconic figure. And as you say, mostly I wanted to get on with my exams and I wanted to get on with my life. I was a, like a lot of refugee kids. I was, A, I was poor and be ambitious. So you have front row seats uh, <coughs> for these student riots that uh, characterized France in the late 60s. You also have front row seats to the Cold War. Um, you're the West Germany correspondent for ABC yes. News and the London correspondent at the time who would go on to be the star anchor, uh, Peter Jennings, uh, is there. You fall in love, you have two yes. children, and Paris, again, is the place where you meet. It's, yes, I was in those days covering the exile of the Ayatollah Khomeini uh, in a Parisian suburb, neuf le, le chateau and it was during that coverage when I was first exposed to the Iranian Revolution, and also when uh, Peter and I had our, our most explosive uh, love affair, which lasted for, for 15 years, and um, and. Fifteen years after this, this great explosion, I fled what was then an unhappy marriage to Paris with my two little kids. And Richard Holbrook, who in those days was the ambassador to Germany, rode not on a white charger, but drove his armored ambassadorial car from Bonn to, uh, to Paris and rescued me. We, ha we were friends, casual friends. And I was, I, was, I was a mess. I felt my life was behind me. I was 40 years old, two kids, and was leaving a, a marriage. And Richard, just as a friend, said, what's the, your favorite part of France? And I said, the Loire Valley. And so off we went um, 18 and years ago. And that's, it was during that trip that we, that we laid the foundation for our new life together. It's interesting because um you're a very promising reporter who, on top of it, gets awards for your coverage of returning to Hungary, to, uh, to, yes. to the scene of where you grew up. But all that has to be put a little bit aside when you have children and Peter is the star anchor, Peter Jennings is the star anchor in New York mm -hmm. for ABC News. Um, do you feel as though the fact that your career had to sort of hit the pause button, mm -hmm. that that may have also been one of the strains? Um, I'm, I'm actually very grateful that... Uh that my career hit the pause button when it did, because it forced me to try another way of life, which is writing books. This is my eighth book, and, and uh, I'm proud to say that they've all done very well. Um, I uh, was also able to spend much more time with my children without giving up who I am, because I was always working on something. And, and, in, and you describe it well when you were then the wife of Richard Holbrook, yes. you realize that uh, being the wife of the UN ambassador and of a ne peace negotiator, at one point you're, you're seated between uh, Slobodan Milosevic <laughs> and the head of, uh, uh, of the Bosnians, and you're entrusted with really important yes. diplomatic tasks. Yes, Richard, Richard said, <laughs> Kati, your job is to make them talk to each other. And of course, this was Milosevic and Izbegovic, who, who, you know, 10 days before were trying to kill each other, literally. And for, for much of that evening, it was the first night at the Dayton Peace Conference, 
they wouldn't even look in each other's direction. So kind of in despair, I said, how did this war start? You know, very naively. And that got them engaged. And by the end of, uh, of, of that conversation, they were calling each other Slobodan and Alia. So I, I felt like uh, I, had, I had succeeded. But Richard used me whenever, um, Richard would use any, any tool available to achieve uh, his, his, his chosen end. And, and uh, for example, when we were at the United Nations, he always had me give the welcoming toast because we entertained uh, everybody from Nelson Mandela to, to President Chirac. Uh, in our residence at the at the Waldorf Towers, and he he, contrary to UN custom, I always gave the welcoming toast because Richard felt that I always spoke from the heart, and yet, with if I may say a little bit of intelligence, and I used to work very hard on those toasts to make them, to make them witty and and to try to. You know, I, I, so yes, I played amateur diplomat. All right, and it did much more than uh, than break the ice, it seems. And and uh, uh, the fact that you and him picked out that Parisian apartment is our good fortune because you're with us today. Thank you. In the studio, I want to thank you very much, Connie Martin, for being with us again. The name of the book is Paris: A Love Story. Thank you for being with us here in the France 24 interview. Stay with us, more to come.